Hello everyone, this is Joey with Persuade and Project Create. I just wanted to give you guys a quick overview on how to use the Surface Pro camera that's built into it. Off on the right, you have panorama mode. You have video camera mode. And then you have that camera, uh, typical still camera mode. And we're not gonna go into the document where it scans or whiteboard. Um, we're really going to focus on these two features here, which is the video and the still camera. Along with the options on the right, as you can see, as we thumb down, above there's also a button where you can put the front facing camera and those also has uh, sets of additional settings that you can use in the event that you're shooting a video, uh, a YouTube video of yourself uh, you don't have to worry about having someone hold the camera. This will be your camera you put up on a tripod or on a stand and you're able to record yourself with a five megapixel camera. You have white balance on the left and then your brightness. Um, and that those are the pro modes and obviously the, the framing guides that you utilize. Here's the quality. As I said, you have a five megapixel camera so you can go up to that resolution. And that's if you want to frame yourself smaller and zoom in in case you want to do a interview type setting where you have different angles and crop in and different settings. So that's the good thing about being able to shoot the larger resolution. But we're gonna keep it at 1080p because that's the desired. We should be able to control that. Flicker reduction, you wanna keep that at auto. Digital video stabilization. If you're holding the camera, you'll wanna turn on this feature. But if it's on a tripod, or you're uh, on the mount placed on your desk, you could turn that off. There's no need. It really just overscans the image in order to reduce the shake. And these are the uh, camera settings for the selfie camera. If you're on basic mode, you basically have your zoom. And you could zoom in and out. You can also pinch and pull uh, without using the feature on the side. But for the sake of this lesson, we're going to go pro mode. You want to have a framing guide uh, because you want to be able to uh, frame in these areas. As you can see, those corners. And then photo quality, we're going to keep it at uh, 6 megapixels because it's 16.9 format. And we can re reuse those uh, photos for videos. And then again, you have the time lapse option, which is unnecessary. The video quality we're going to keep there. And then the flicker reduction, again, not needed. State video stabilization, we're not going to need because we're uh, stable on the, uh, on the surface. So first icon on the left, we want to go through and show you the zoom. As I said earlier, you could zoom in in this manner here or you could zoom in by pinching and pulling the actual image on the screen. So that's a two finger touch, pinch and pull. The next is white balance. That's what WB stands for. Where as you can see, based on your different types of light, fluorescent, daylight, cloudy, and automatic, the camera will change its balance space on that setting. So if you are outside, depending on it being cloudy or daylight, you can have that correction. Or you could just keep it on auto and let the camera do its correction. But if you find that it starts uh, color correcting while you're shooting, then you'll definitely want to set it to a daylight setting. And this way you can do your color corrections in post. By setting it to any one of these uh, settings, you have full control of it not shifting without your, your control auto it's at the computer's liberty to determine so let that be a lesson because many times when you are shooting you want to be in full control of your camera if you're in a controlled environment if you're shooting on location and there's a lot of variables there's too much going on that's where you go into the auto but you compromise the quality of your footage the focus it is the focal depth of the um, lens so it's going to make it blurry or sharp. And this is if you, if you want to go into doing 
uh, or when you start doing uh, focus techniques uh, based off of zooming or you leave it on auto and it'll correct it based off of wherever you tap. So if I tap here, it's going to focus on that area as opposed to tapping on the far back, it's going to focus on that area and blur the, the closer objects. And, and that's basically how that works. The other feature is the brightness. So if you find that you're in a dark setting, you can actually increase the aperture of the camera in order to let more light in, or you could darken, darken it up in order to make more moody. These are corrections that you typically want to do in post-production. So I encourage you to either leave it on auto or at zero. So let's put that back at zero. So that covers the video camera features. There's not too many. There's not too many controls that you need to have, which is good because this is a basic introduction to it. You're not going into doing a full production camera, but at least you're able to understand the fundamentals of how you can effectively use your Surface Pro. For the photo camera settings, when selected, if you see the options on the left, you'll see that you have HDR on or HDR Pro. This is, uh, HDR is an abbreviation for high dynamic range. The second icon is for timer, so you can set it to two seconds or five seconds when you hit the shutter. You have five seconds to get in front of the shot frame and it'll shoot. And you can go up to, up to 10 seconds, then you can turn it back off. The next option is your zoom. You can zoom again with the slider or you can pinch and pull on the screen. So going to the advanced pro settings, I always like to have rule of thirds. There's also the golden ratio. Crosshairs, if you want to stay focused on a subject, or a square, if you're trying to keep items or subjects within a frame. However, the rule of thirds establishes a solid enough framing within the shot that you can follow everything and that you can include everything in your shot and you can crop down to your desired size, especially considering that you have a higher megapixel. So we're going to keep it at 16 by 9 as opposed to 4.3 because these photos can be scaled into 1080p video footage. So that's 1920 by 1080. This is 3264 by 1836. Uh, we're going to keep the time lapse option off. Video option uh, is, is not needed. These are additional ba basic settings for the camera. We're only focused on the still camera right now. So now you see that the options have uh, increased. The timer has been moved up to the top. You still got up to 10 seconds. You can turn it off. Your zoom has been moved up there. You have your white balance, so you can control what kind of lighting you're in. Again, if you ever are caught in a situation to where uh, automatic is shifting your color space, uh, I recommend for you to choose daylight and edit your photos in post where you can color correct them as you wish. The next is your focus. So you can select your object and you can blur out and create a cinematic effect for your photos. Uh, once you're controlling the focus manually. So I've selected the front part of the chest set and now I've selected the back part of the chest set. Um, and I'm allowing for the autofocus to move the move the um, the focal point towards the back, and you can see a little blurring happening happening on the front. Your isometrics, uh, your ISO, uh, is the amount of light that is let into the lens. And the higher you go, the grainier, as you can see, the footage gets, and the lower it is, the less artifacting that you'll see. Uh, industry standards about 400 for typical photos um, or you can leave that on auto again you're shooting a photo so uh, these kind of parameters are only uh, going to be, be affected depending on the level of detail that you're going to need for your photo and these principles we're teaching as fundamentals but are, are going to only really be important when you're shooting with a professional grade camera 
The reason why we're utilizing it here is to teach you those fundamentals. However, the photos that you'll be shooting from this camera aren't going to be to the quality that you would uh, want to take that level of detail. Shutter speed is the same thing. We're wanting to, to teach the fundamentals of what shutter speed does. And as you can see, the higher numbers means the shutter is opening and closing at that speed. And the higher it goes, it is allowing more light to get in. So if you want to see a, a good example of both of these at play, I would set this at a higher um, light exposure and then I'd get the ISO and do it at a lower. And you can see that it's darker, but you can still see the, the objects. And if I increase the ISO to say 1600, we'll say 800, I can get the shutter speed and decrease it in order to balance it out. So I'll return these back to normal or auto. And then there's brightness where it actually brightens and darkens the image itself. This I always recommend you, you take care of in post and not do in camera because all it really does is um, darken and lighten the image. So you really wanna control your details with your ISO and your shutter speed. And that's basically the uh, photo and video camera within the Surface Pro. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and a quick overview on how to use the photo and video camera within the Surface Pro. And we look forward to hosting you guys soon. Cheers.